In the last tutorial, we made the camera initialize its position, but it's not following the player yet. In the update camera function, which gets called every time the player move, we have to do two things. First of all, we need to know how much the character moved. As I told you, moving the camera is like moving a sheet of paper, the canvas, you offset it. So you have to calculate the player's change in motion, his offset, and then you will offset the canvas transform accordingly. So let's create a new local variable called player offset. This will be equal to the last known player position. So let's call it last player position minus his current position. That's a difference. To get the new player position, as we have stored the player node in the player variable called player.getPose. We have to create the last player position. I'll write it at the top in the global variable. It's called last player position. And it's going to be equal to player.getPosition. In other words, it's going to be the player's position at the start of the game. And we can also change that in the ready function. As when the game was ready, we would get the player's position. It's going to be the last player position. Now we've got the player offset. The player has moved. So we calculated the offset between the last and the new position. We have to update this last known position because now he's at a different place in the world. So we set the last player pose variable to the new player position. Now we have to do the same thing we did in the ready function. We should get the canvas transform, modify it, and then set it to the new value. So you can copy the three lines of code and paste them in the update camera function. This second line has to change though, because we will offset the camera by the player offset. So we can change the equal sign to plus equal. We will add this offset to the canvas transform. And let's add the player offset variable. Now that's it. It will work. I'd say we might want to return the player offset if somehow we want to log it to the console from, let's say, the process function. You can add this line, but it's optional. The function will work without it. And if we play the game, the camera now smoothly follows the character. There's no hiccup. The code might seem redundant at this stage because we have three similar lines in two places in the code, but there's a big difference. In the ready function, we set the canvas transform. We initialize it. We use the equal sign. Well, in the update camera function, we offset it. We add something to it. That's different. Hence, we cannot create one function that would simplify both blocks of code. This was a short tutorial, so that's a good occasion to drop a little tip. You've seen we use both the onReady keyword and the ready function. These are the same. The onReady keyword is what we call syntactic sugar. It makes it so the code that follows it, initializing a variable, will only be evaluated once the scene is ready. That is to say, after Godot has created all the nodes inside of the scene. This is why you can write something like player equals get node player. You can get the player node because thanks to the onReady keyword, Godot will wait until this node exists. The reason I use the onReady keyword at the top is to create global variables inside of my script. The player is very important for a camera. As we add complexity to the script, we will likely use it in several blocks of code. Currently, we use it in the update camera function. In the previous tutorial, we used it in the ready function as well. However, when you have something that's more local, that's used only once when you start the script, you can put it in the ready function as a local variable. This canvas transform variable is different from this one down the update camera function, because these are both local. They only exist inside the function. Now you know how to make a basic custom camera in Godot, but what we did there, the camera 2D node can do just as well. 
That's why in the next video, we will see how to make instant room transitions that set the base for a Zelda-inspired camera transition. So see you in the next one.